I'm Rosie. And I'm Jim. And this is Cruising Sea Venture. Welcome to episode six. In this episode, we finish our time at the co-op, at least for round one, and we head back home to Everett. Here is the upper deck that was done by the prior owner. And back here, you can now see that we are done with the lower upper deck, if you will. Yeah, there's Jim, very excited about this. Uh, looks great, it seems much more solid. And uh, we're really excited to do our next project, which will be put the railings on. So, and that'll be done back in Everett. So for here and now, this is done. Here is the bottom paint work. And it is now complete. It looks beautiful. The scaffolding out the back window is uh, getting taken down. We're almost done. And she's in the swings. to review the stability analysis that you just saw in the film Jonathan Moore our naval architect working on uh, to make a really complicated story that I don't fully understand at all really a lot of geometry not my strong suit trigonometry I think too I'm not even sure what that is but anyway did a whole lot of work a whole lot of analysis determining the stability of the boat including its amount of boat above the waterline and below the waterline and height and weight um, the roll period, how much this moving around and his stability analysis caused the boat to heal, comparing all this to the International Maritime Organization standards for ocean going power boats, and the end result of all that was Sea Venture passes. Uh, it's, she's good to go with the new superstructure and dinghy up top and the weight that that adds, um, which is great. It probably stems from the fact that Sea Venture was originally built for ocean travel. So no real surprise there. All all worked out. All worked out great. All these numbers. I got lots and lots of numbers, but I think it would bore you to death. So that's it. If you have any specific questions about uh, numbers that he came up with, that deals with the GMT, the metacentric height, uh, freeboard analysis of the weight above and below the waterline, height of the boat above and below the waterline 
how the impact of whether we have 12 tons of fuel and water on board or not impacts it. Put a comment at the end of the video and I'll be happy to try to answer all your questions. Well, back in the water and phase two done up at Port Townsend Shipwrights Co-op and cruising back to Everett with our very empty upper deck so we can work on installing the railing system and reinstalling our propane system so we can cook. And of course, the day we're gonna go back, it's raining, the wind is like 20 knots or something like that. It's small craft advisories and gale force warnings in Puget Sound today. But we're headed directly into it, so really no roll, just a bunch of pitching. So we have about a four hour cruise back to Everett and we will be back at home for a while before heading back to Port Townsend for installation of the new superstructure. Here is the final drawings of the new superstructure that will be on Sea Venture. This shows the paravane pole in the up position. This side shows the paravane pole in the deployed position. The new superstructure and crow's nest. Here's a side view of the same thing. You can see the boom, the ladder that will go up to the crow's nest and uh, the paravane poles in the up position. So the new drawings that are um, what we're moving forward with. All right, time to cover the cost. My favorite topic. Uh, I got lots of notes, so excuse me if I'm like looking around and shuffling and stuff. So uh, we were at $84,814. I'll let you know at the end of episode five. Got to redo the estimate on the superstructure because we made so many changes to it and beefed it up and added the crow's nest and all that good stuff. We also have kept a detailed uh, personal ledger, Rosie and I have, of all the expenses because we have a lot of expenses actually associated with the refit, not at the co-op, a month of hotel in Port Townsend since remember we live aboard and we couldn't live aboard while the boat was inside there. 40 some ferry trips across Puget Sound. A bunch of uh, expensive stuff it seemed like at fisheries all the all grit paint, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the sanders, the $2,700 at rail makers for all the stainless refinishing, all that stuff. We've been keeping a, a detailed ledger, adds up to just over $10,000. The work done to date on the deck, ceiling in here, the post, the ceiling work in the cockpit, all the stuff detailed in the prior refit videos, uh, total right now is $43,521. So with that, plus our other expenses, we're at $53,779. And then we've got the estimate, which I have right here, for the new superstructure and paravane system. That is $56,656. We're also gonna have about $1,250 for haul out and storage. So our revised total right now, $111,695. This probably, hopefully, is a little firmer number uh, because the new manufacturing installation is a little more certain. And um, and, and so hopefully uh, we'll, we'll stay right in that area because we need to. So that's where we are, just, just under $112,000 to finish the refit, uh, to put the last piece in the puzzle uh, so we can comfortably voyage anywhere that we want to go in Sea Venture. We're back in Everett, still working on the ceiling project. Now we're starting to put all the teak trim back up in place. So this should uh, all hopefully go well. We'll see if all the old pieces actually fit. Across here, we'll cut them. We've got a couple of them already tacked in back here, but I think the end result is gonna be really good. But it looks we're getting very, close. It looks very nautical. So we wanted to show you the finished product. This is the salon ceiling. And check out our pole. Here we are. This is it. And it's holding up everything. Here we are in the cockpit. We've talked about and showed you the beams that we had laminated and made, but we never really showed them to you in place because those got done, actually the second one got done so much later in the process, right before we got 
uh, left Port Townsend. But we now have our second beam in. Here was the first one. And the first one has a couple of poles off the corner. Let me show them to you. You can see how they built them in onto the rail and cut around the existing railing uh, to support the upper deck. So we no longer have a diving board on the back end of our upper deck. So now what's left to do is we need to sand and clean up the, re the rest of the ceiling here. We put one coat of varnish on the beam, so we have to do another couple of coats on the beam. And then we're going to repaint it in some color that's a little more appealing. And uh, just because this is not. Um, and that'll give us a nice contrast to the beams. And we're going to get some new lights back here. So we'll get some new salon lights, or excuse me, cockpit lights, and uh, brighten up our ceiling a bit. So that's it. Thanks for watching this episode. We hope you really in enjoyed it. You know, I know the estimate has gone way up from where we originally were at. And I uh, just want to say, um, you know, that's, we, we, we kind of knew this was a potential going in and that we were going to do what we wanted to do to make Sea Venture just right for us. It, it's all good. It, it's all good. We're really looking forward to having Sea Venture so ready for our, the ocean travel that we want to do. It's just really exciting at our end to see these final steps uh, coming together this winter before we leave on our epic journey. Um, at the uh, end of the video, you have a chance to uh, subscribe or leave a comment or like it or thumbs up it or whatever that is on YouTube. If, if you could do those things, that would be great. It's the only thing we get out of this videos is your feedback. And so your, your feedback would be great. We, it's really uh, very much appreciated. We'll do another refit video in uh, two or three weeks. It kind of depends. Probably a little bit, you know, holiday season's coming up. And, uh, and so we'll be spending lots of time with family doing stuff. And, um, and we want to make sure there's enough good content. In the meantime, I'm going to try to get to a couple of the tech talks I've been talking about in the past. Short five, seven, eight minute videos talking about one particular technical aspect of operating an ocean going powerboat. So uh, until next time, uh, we wishing you uh, no wind and flat seas. So take care and happy holidays.